And so what do we get out of this picture? We have that storms come in life. And understand that. I want to take you to another storm today. And may the Lord bless you through it. We're looking in Acts chapter 27. I'm going to be a bit brief in this. And miss some things that you might appreciate. And we're starting in verse 9. There we stayed for several days, Paul says. The weather was becoming dangerous for long voyages. Using the Living Bible, it works a bit better to be read. By then, because it was late in the year, and Paul spoke to the ship's officers about it. It was late for voyages. Sirs, he said, I believe there is trouble ahead if we go on. Perhaps shipwreck, loss of cargo, injuries, and death. Now, as Paul speaks, he is not speaking prophetically. He is speaking with revelation and wisdom in the guidance and direction. Because later, he changes the state and doesn't speak about death. But he knows that there is a storm. Many times you don't know the full details, but you know collision is coming. Collision is coming. Thank God that you can know that there is something to be focusing on that is a problem, a difficulty, and that God has given you wisdom to understand we're in a time of concern. We're in a time when there could be difficulty. We're in a time when something could go wrong. And Paul is not saying, we're going to go out there and God's going to manifest his power and we're going to have a miracle and I can't wait for it. No. He's speaking out of wisdom. If we get into that boat and if we travel in that boat, we can have a destruction that is so devastating that lives can be lost. And so, but the officers in charge of the prisoners listened more to the ship's captain and the owner than to Paul. And since their havens was an exposed harbor, a poor place to spend the winter, most of the crew advised trying to go further up the coast to Phoenix in order to winter there. Phoenix was a good harbor with only a northwest and southwest exposure. Just then a light wind began blowing from the south, and it looked like a perfect day for the trip. So they pulled up anchor and sailed along close to the shore. But shortly afterwards, the weather changed abruptly, and a heavy wind or of typhoon strength, a northeaster, they called it, caught the ship and blew it out to sea. They tried at first to face back to shore, but couldn't. So they gave up and let the ship run before the gale. We finally sailed behind a small island named Claudia, where with great difficulty we hoisted aboard the lifeboat that was being towed behind us and then banded the ship with ropes to strengthen the hull. The sailors were afraid of being driven across to the quicksands of the African coast. So they lowered the topsails and were thus driven before the wind. The next day as the seas grew higher, the crew began throwing the core cargo overboard. The following day they threw out the tackle and anything else that could lay, they could lay their hands on. The terrible storm raged unabated many days until at last all hope was gone. No one had eaten for a long time, but finally Paul called the crew together and said, Men, you should have listened to me in the first place and not left their havens. You would have avoided all this injury and loss. But cheer up, not one of us will lose our lives, even though the ship will go down. For last night... An angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Don't be afraid, Paul, for you will surely stand trial before Caesar. 
What's more, God has granted your request and will save the lives of all those sailing with you. So take courage, for I believe God, it will be just as he said, but we will be shipwrecked on an island. What I want you to see that there is a progression of what God does in our lives when we're in the midst of a storm. God comes and gives us greater information as we're going along. I don't know if your storm is sexual, sinful, carnal. I don't know if it's financial. I don't know what it is physical. But God brings you up to speed as you're going along. He adds to your understanding. He adds to your knowledge. He adds to your vision. He doesn't just give you a word that you're going to make. But he's bringing you up to date. Thank God he can speak to you day by day, week by week, month by month. God, give me another word. Especially when I'm in the storm. Give me another word, especially when I'm in the storm. About midnight on the 14th night of the storm, as we were being driven to and fro on the sea, the sailors suspected land was near. They sounded and found 120 feet of water below them. A little later they sounded again and found only 90 feet. At this rate they knew they would soon be driven ashore. And fearing rocks along the coast, they drew out four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. Some of the sailors planned to abandon the ship and lowered the emergency boat as though they were going to put out anchors from the prow. And this man, Paul, is a prisoner. And yet God is making him a leader in the midst of a storm. You don't need a title to be God's man. You don't need a title to be God's woman. You don't need a title to be the person that God uses. If God gets in you, I don't care how bad you look as an image. He can cause his word to come through you. You be encouraged in this hour. God is able to use a prisoner named Paul. To make a difference. But Paul said to the soldiers and commanding officer, You will all die unless everyone stays aboard. What is Paul doing? He's moving with the situation. You gotta move with the situation if your husband's not saved. You gotta move with the situation if your children are backslid. You gotta move in with the situation if your church is under a struggle. You gotta move in the situation. You just don't believe God. You realize in this moment, God, I am a part of the solution. I am a part of your purpose being unfolding here. And there's gotta be adjustments. Why didn't Paul just take the word that the angel gave him? Because a God, a God had already factored Paul into the equation. You are factored into the equation. Is God going to bring you through? Not without your help. Is God going to give you the victory? Not without your help. Is God going to promote you? Not without your help. I don't care what the preacher prophesies. If you don't get the anointing and God get a hold of your ears, it's not going to happen until you begin to be in tune with what God is saying. You are part of the victory. You are part of the victory. You are part of the solution. You're used to make it happen. And so Paul said, you had better make sure that these men don't leave. Because if they're gone, you're all in trouble. If they're gone, somebody said, but God already spoke. But he already knew what you were going to do. 
was not already promised. But you better hear from God because except you are doing what God says and come to the place of being where God wants you to be in the battle, there can't be victory except you understand victory is not without an interaction between you and God. You have to be able to be an instrument that he's using for his purpose to bring victory. You see, Paul is involved in it all the way along. There's an impartation of his gift of revelation, of wisdom, of knowledge, of understanding all the way along. Sometimes we just accept the word of God and, and, and that's it. No, go back. Go back to him and say, God, what do you want to tell me about refining this moment right now? And so God promises you that he's going to save your husband. You better hear from God a whole lot between the time he told you that until the moment that you have that victory. Because if you simply say, I'm trusting God, God is trusting you to hear him. And God's got to get a hold of you and get a hold of your spirit, get a hold of your mind. He calls you to know that we fight against the powers of darkness and we're going to have victory because God is using us to pull down strongholds. You can't just accept it. you got to be imparted with power to be a part of the victory. A part of the victory that overcomes the storm. Look and see in this scripture how many times that Paul is interacting after he claims the promise. After he claims the promise. And so when you believe God to take care of your finances, you can't just leave it stop when the fact that you heard from God, God's going to meet my need with my finances. You better hear the next word. Tear up that credit card. You better hear the next word. Be sure and take the overtime they give you. you got to hear the next word. And that's the problem with the church. We're taking the word, but we're not taking the relationship of victory that comes because we're part of the battle that says, I'm not going to die but live and give God the glory, but I'm going to put on the whole armor of God and stand against the wiles of the devil, and God will bring me through. Over and over, Paul is coming into the picture again. So many of us, we want to just hear from God and then go lay down somewhere. And God is saying, if he speaks to you, arise and put on the whole armor and stand against the wiles of the enemy and hear my word and speak my word and know that I am able to perform that good work in the middle of the storm. Why didn't Paul just say, Lord, let's not have a storm. I think it's for our good. So that we can understand, can God do that? Yes, he does. But yet God allows natural things to unfold so many times. And there's always going to be storms. There's always going to be storms. The magnitude of storms are going to be awesome. And Jesus said that everything that goes wrong isn't judgment. Everything that goes wrong is in judgment, because if judgment should come, nobody should be spared. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, we should be spared because we're Christians, that's true. But we have to understand that that's God's grace. And he gives his grace not only to saints, but he also gives some grace to sinners. He gives some mercy to sinners. You say, where do you get that from? The rain shall fall upon the just and the unjust alike. That's what the Bible says. Good things come to good people and bad people. You have to understand that. What is it that causes us to be destroyed? Sin is costly. Sin is costly. But it's not God that has destroyed you. It's the power of the devil. It's the power of sin. And if you don't resist the devil, he will come against you. But if you res resist the devil, he will 
will flee from you. He will flee from you. Your problem isn't with God. Your problem is with the devil. But the devil comes to steal and to kill and destroy. Thank you, Jesus. Some of the sailors planned to abandon the ship. But Paul said to the soldiers, you will all die unless everyone stays aboard. Think of the wisdom that Paul had. Think of the understanding that Paul had. What do I want more than anything? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Because Paul didn't have wisdom on one facet. It worked across the whole spectrum of his life. He understood things because God had given him that gift. He had wisdom. Brother, you need wisdom more than anything. If you lack wisdom, ask it from God. If you have a need for revelation, ask it for, from God. Because it's not that you're going to be without storms, but you're going to have a way through a storm. Thank God you're going to have a way through the storm. And you will miss some storms, and thank God for it. But you won't miss every storm. And it only takes one storm. To devastate you. How many storms does it take to devastate you? It only takes one. As the darkness gave way to verse 33, the early morning light, Paul begged everyone to eat. You haven't touched food for two weeks, he said. Please eat something now for your own good, for not a hair of your heads shall perish. Then he took some hard tack and gave thanks to God before them all and broke off a piece and ate it. Suddenly everyone felt better and began eating. Your example can change other people. The other people were stuck with their own thoughts and their own emotions. But when they saw the thoughts and the emotion of Paul, they began to resonate with what was in him. Let your light so shine that others can see what is happening in you, your good works, and glorify the Father in heaven. Make me an example. Make me an example. Make me an example. Make me an example. Make me an example that will influence another. Make me an example. Example, dear God, I pray, make me an example. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The soldiers advised them when they saw that they were going to be destroyed as a ship. Verse 42, to kill the prisoners lest any of them swim ashore and escape. But Julius wanted to spare Paul, so he told them no. Julius was not a Christian, but God used him. I got news for you. God's going to use some people that aren't Christians to bless you. God's going to use some people that think right Maybe they haven't come to the knowledge of Christ, and we pray that they will. But I want to tell you, somebody was thinking right on the boat besides Paul. And this man that had power to say no to his destruction said no. God can use anybody. He, he can cause a donkey to prophesy. He can cause a sinner to bless you. If he can cause a donkey to prophesy, he can cause a sinner to bless you. Then thank God that God is able to use even those that know him not. He's able to get into their thoughts. He's able to get into their mind. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And now I come to the big question. Why do we have such a storm in New Orleans? Why? The answer is very simple. It's 30 feet below sea level. If that city was built on a hill, it wouldn't have happened. Don't build danger into your life. Don't build danger in your life. 
I don't have to wear no seat belt. God would keep me. Put that seat belt on. The answer is very simple. Storms come to that location. Not that big so often, but they come to that location. That is a fact. You don't have to be a prophet to know that. You don't even have to be a rocket scientist to know that. How bad have storms come in that area? I was stationed at Key West, Florida. And that long journey from Miami down through the Keys to Key West, and looking at a storm that had been such a long time before, that had been so powerful that it picked up railroad tracks, rails rather, railroad rails, and piled, pounded them down in the coral. And there they are, bent. And the last that I was there, you could stay, see how that a storm could be strong enough to pick up a railroad rail, solid iron, and carry it like a leaf and devastate it into the ground. There are storms. You better know what kind of storms could be yours. There's storms that bring divorce. You better start thinking about it. There's storms that bring destruction to children. You better start thinking about it. There's storms that cause devastation in economic moments. You better start thinking about it. Storms will come. Storms will come. Storms will come. And God doesn't cancel storms because you're a Christian. But he says to you, call upon me and I will spare thee. And you won't lose your life. You won't lose your life. You won't lose your life. Lose your life. But storms come. So you love the Lord. I want to tell you, storms still come physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, in every area of life, in nature as well. Storms are a part of this moment. And because you're a believer, it doesn't mean there will be no more storms. Will there be another storm as bad as what happened in that moment? Oh, yes. And probably worse, maybe not in your lifetime. But that's not the worst storm. And there's been worse storms in that area. It happens to be the worst that has touched New Orleans. But that area has known storm after storm after storm. And when you live like there isn't going to be a storm, you're foolish. When you live like there isn't going to be a storm, you're foolish. There was a storm that filled the boat with water that Jesus was in. There was a storm that was there that took down the boat that Paul was in. And 260 some men, I didn't realize it was that big a boat. That's no small boat. And I tell you right now, you're not better than Jesus. You're not better than Paul. And so don't just think, well, I'm serving the Lord and I'm trusting him. You better know in that moment the only thing he's promising you is that you're not going to die. You better believe in this moment. God, give me wisdom that I'm going to get through this moment. I'm trusting you and help me, dear God, I pray, to stop being in the middle of the storm. And that's what Paul said. We don't have to be in the middle of this storm. We don't have to be in the middle of this storm. We don't have to be in the middle of this storm. You don't have to be in the middle of this storm. And Paul said, we don't have to be in the middle of this storm. Let's not get into it. There's a storm coming, but you don't have to be in the middle of it. But rest assured, storms are going to keep coming. You're going to see more storms. There's storms that are coming to this nation that I don't even want to talk to you about. As a prophet of God, I know it. 
But I don't even want to talk to you about it because I don't want to add to the burden that's upon you. But I want to tell you, you haven't seen the last storm. But God can keep you out of it. God can show you how to escape it. And if you're in the middle and you can't get away from it, God will preserve you. You have to know in this moment, God is God who can keep me. One of my greatest joys is, at this juncture of time in my life, past 70 years, and I'm able to preach like a young man. I thank God for that. And when I listen to the messages God has given me, it gives me goosebumps. Woo! Next to Pastor Chris, because I want to show honor to him, my favorite is Pastor George Bogle. I thank the Lord that God will. Why? Because God gets into me. God gets into me. But while it's true that I can come here and preach a word like this, there is also the truth that I could have a storm just like you. And I ask God, keep me out of the place of the storm because storms do come. Storms do come. Temptations do come. Situations come our way. If we don't prepare against it, you're going to have a storm just because you're saved. Don't say, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't say that. I hope you wouldn't, but you don't have a guarantee. If you've ever done it once, you could do it twice, but God is able to keep you. He's able to keep you. He's able to keep you. He's able to keep you. Stand and give God a praise offering. 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 Praise, offering. praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. He's got a way for you in the time of storm. Thank you for listening to Night Vision with Pastor George Bogle. If you would like to support this ministry, please.